But I'm a big fan of this Mark 7.5 Golf R Estate, which begs the question, why am I selling it instead of my GTI TCR? Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video and it's one that I make with a heavy heart because it's the last one that's ever going to feature my Mark 7.5 Golf R Estate. I bought this about three months ago from Crew Volkswagen and three months is a short time to have a car even for a YouTube car but that was the plan from the beginning. I bought it because I got a really good deal on it and I wanted to keep the miles and the worst of the winter weather off my Golf GTI TCR. I also live 25 miles away from work now, so I wanted something that could get me to work if it snowed. Being four-wheel drive, it's perfect at that. But most importantly, I wanted to spend some time with a Golf R because, believe it or not, I actually haven't done that for a very, very long time. And it's an important car to me, both as a Volkswagen enthusiast and as a Volkswagen used car dealer. I've done 2,400 miles in it now, and I've got to know it really well. And I really like this car. And in this video, I want to explain to you why I think the Mark 7.5 Golf R Estate is the best Mark 7.5 Golf you can buy. Okay, you're probably a bit surprised that I rate the Golf R Estate above every other 7.5 Golf, including my GTI TCR, but I do. But let me explain to you why in this video. So I'll give it a full review. We'll look at the outside, the inside, and we will, of course, go for a drive. Before we do that, though, I need to say big thanks to Jilks' Garage Cafe here in the village of Kyneton in Warwickshire for letting me film here at very short notice. They've just closed now, it's a Thursday afternoon. They're open Wednesday to Sunday, nine till three for takeout. And they also do burgers and pizzas in the evenings on Fridays and Saturdays for takeout. They also do local delivery with the owners. E-Golf being used for that. So nice eco-friendly way of getting your burger or pizza. This is actually the overflow car park here which you may or may not have seen but it's quite a nice sunny spot um, but obviously what with lockdown not many people have had much call to use it there was also a marquee here late in the summer but there's this lovely little seating area as well as you can see it gets it gets the sun and they've got these really cool painted garages which they'll eventually copy with these ones as well so yeah nice little backdrop right let's now talk about the car now what i really like about the 7.5 is that it's actually a very very subtle car more so than mark 7 i think that's primarily because they sold a lot of r lines which look very similar you may or may not like that fact but i get a cheeky pleasure from driving around a 300 horsepower 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds car that looks so boring especially when it's on its 17 inch winter wheels and tyres. I put it back on the Cadiz now, which is what it came with. I think it works really well now with the colour scheme. So you've got the sort of silver and black of the wheels, which kind of goes with the black and white on the rest of the car. And the mirrors actually work kind of better with these wheels than they did with the grey Pretorias that I put on it for a video a few weeks ago. So yeah, aesthetically, it's not in any way racy, really. Um, it just looks smart and understated. It's got the best headlamps I've ever used. So these are LEDs, way better than the Bi-Xenons on the Mark 7. And these late cars, whether it's an R or a GTI, get dynamic light assist, which is automatic main beam. And that doesn't just turn the main beam off, it just turns a bit off that blinds other drivers and leaves the rest of it on, which is brilliant. And you don't even get flashed by people coming the other way. Well, you get the odd flash, but that would be somebody who'd flash you even if they're on um, dipped. <laughs> so yeah, that's brilliant, it's made winter much more bearable having great headlights, much more useful really than the four-wheel drive, which I've used pretty much infrequently when we had a bit of snow and so on. So yeah, it's a great all year package. You don't get the special LED rear lights you get on the GTI and the R hatchbacks. These are just the same lights as the base model estate. But again, that adds to its stealth. The only thing that really gives it away are those four exhaust tips, which look so wrong on such a plain looking white estate car but i love that contradiction and they stay clean as well so they're really shiny even if you don't want them to be because it's a petrol particulate filter car being a 2020 model year car they just don't get dirty um, and amazingly they sound really good and that's partly because unlike the mark 7 version this 7.5 has got two genuine exhaust tips and they're not valved either so they're just just nice they just make a good noise all the time and they're even better in race mode as I'll show you later. 
so yeah a smart car let's have a look at that interior then so a lot of people bang on about this being better than mark 8 well i'm not so sure it's beginning to look a bit dated now i'm not a big fan of this sort of fake leather really i prefer the alcantara on the tcr um but it looks all right i mean the door car's not massively different to mark 8 these silver bits look a bit i don't know a bit, bit dated but what doesn't look dated is the active info display which is a digital instrument cluster to be honest it's a bit of a gimmick i tend to leave it in this mode the navigation mode is great but if you don't use the nav on here you use carplay it's not so great because carplay does not go from here to here so you just this is kind of wasted really i just leave it in in the normal mode we've got this screen here which again is a bit like mark 8 the only difference is we're not using it to do the climate control which we would be on mark 8 just start her up the big difference is that on mark 8 the screen is higher which is better for visibility when you're driving which is useful because you're going to need it a lot more as it does the climate control um, but really there's not an awful lot of difference it really is just climate control yes it does feel like something is missing down here on the mark 8 this is a nice bit of styling even though the buttons should really be on this side for right hand driver they never swap them over that's always bugged me with mark 7 7.5 i'm not a big fan of the plastic sort of tray bit down here on mark 8 nice bit of carbon fiber there the seats are not the trendy sort of sporty seats you get in the mark 8 but they're nice and they work and they do look a bit more expensive dare i say it you've got alcantara and this very grippy cloth yeah i think generally a lot of people prefer this darker interior to the early one in mark 7 but in a, in a lot of respects it's very very similar but mark 7s are looking very very dated here and this was sort of like a facelift update to make it look more modern but there are still bits of the dash architecture like this bit and some of this bit that looks just looks a bit old now okay you get the flock lining there which is nice but i think if i bought a mark 8 i'd have to take that out get it flock lined and then i'd be pretty happy with it driving position is lovely it's just a golf isn't it it's just a golf it's just does the job it feels pretty well made and not flashy um right let's then i think now go for a drive in this mark 7.5 golf r estate Okay guys, here we are driving my Mark 7.5 Golf R Estate and what I love about this car is it loses none of the practicality of the Golf Estate that it's based on. So it's got a massive IKEA friendly boot, which makes a lot of difference really because it gives you three cars in one. You get an estate car, you get a 4x4 for the winter and you get a hot hatch which we'll come to shortly. On these 18 inch wheels with bridge stones there's not an awful lot of tyre noise. On these passive dampers it's very well judged, it's a very good balance of ride and handling it very rarely jars you it doesn't annoy you at all but it still goes around corners pretty well seven speed dsg is the perfect box for this car because it's just so seamless when you're driving slowly but it also gives you gears when you're on it as we'll find out shortly we've also got an exhaust noise a character a real one i've deactivated the fake sound because that just confuses things when i bought this car from crew the salesman went this has got a much better sounding exhaust than the hatchback which made me curious and it's true there's always a bit of a burble there probably helps if you've got the parcel shelf rolled forward which you wouldn't do on a hatchback that often but if you put it into race mode it's like it's been mapped by an italian so we'll just put it into sport on the gearbox rather than manual and when you change down it, it changes the gear with a bit of a flare of the rev and crackles as well which is totally unexpected in a car that looks this sensible i've heard them before in the tcr and the club sport s but i've not heard them before in a golf r hatchback for example we've even got an eco mode as well so you can just come off the gas and it goes down to idle 
which saves you a bit of fuel here and there. That's one problem with this car is that it is quite thirsty. You're carrying around about 10% more weight than the hatchback. And of course, you've got four wheel drive, which you haven't got in the GTI. So I've used, I've done 30 to the gallon in this car over the time I've had it. And in the TCR over a similar sort of distance, 2,400 miles, that did 32 to the gallon. Okay, this was driven through winter, but then the first thousand miles were running in miles anyway. And I was on winter tires as well, which were a bit more efficient than they would be normally so it is a significantly thirstier car and for a lot of people okay you can't buy a gti estate but you can buy a gtd estate and those will do i think 50 miles to the gallon quite easily i reckon even on a pessimistic calculation it would do 45 the way i drive commuting up and down a motorway so you know you've got to ask yourself is it really worth it if you can't throw it down a good road or if you're not the kind of driver that pushes the limits of a car like I do. And for me, I don't think I could commute in this car because yes, I've got a lot more grip for a few months of the year, but from you know April to November, a GTI is perfectly good at putting the power down, especially one with a VAQ diff and some good tires on it. So yeah, I'd always feel like I was running around with a rucksack on my back with stuff that I didn't need carrying the four-wheel drive system. And likewise, the estate body makes it heavier as well. And I don't necessarily that often use the estate. And how much more can I get in this than I can in a hatch anyway? How often do I use the extra capacity? But if it drives like a hot hatch as well, then I guess I can forgive a lot of things. So let's put it into race mode. Okay, so passive dampers means that in race mode, it doesn't actually switch the dampers into hard. So that's good because that's really hard to unpick in individual mode because you never really get the full mode when you set it up similarly in individual. So we've got a nice bubble from the exhaust. We've got pops and farts on the overrun. We don't have that really distinctive fart of the Mark 7 in between changes where you used to go wah, wah, in race mode. But it's just a lot more sort of authentic sounding, just having burbles and a few pretty inconsistent really pops and crackles. That sounds great. Corners, well you can feel the weight but it doesn't half hold on. It's 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 good. It's good. And the brakes are quite good as well. It's not the best hot hatch by any means, but it makes up for that with just so much practicality and appeal. I love it a lot. This is the car I should be keeping. I shouldn't really be driving a GTI. Driving a subtle car that's fast, especially when it's on winter wheels where it looks just like an R-line, is fun because, you know, you go around that corner and there's a walker there, not in the road, but maybe shaking their head and they're looking at you thinking this is just like a diesel Golf, not like a grey, primer grey hot hatch making you the typical boy racer. Yeah. So this is one of my little roads. It's a 60 mile an hour road. It's got some corners that you've got to feel pretty confident to take at 60 miles an hour. So if you do drive like this, then maybe you should have the R over the GTD. So I won't put it on cruise because I like to use the throttle to stabilize the car, but we'll do 60 as much as we can through these bends. So 60 in here, that's quite easy in the dry. It's been a long time since we've taken it. This one's a little trickier, so we'll kind of turn in on the brakes a bit to get the nose into the apex and onto the gas, 60 miles an hour. This one's slightly off camber, but we'll do it again, just drop a gear instead of touching the brakes. Fifth gear and lovely, and we're staying within the lane as well. So because it's not as dynamically brilliant as the hatchback, you actually can have a bit of fun at 60 miles an hour because it just doesn't feel as easy. It's, yeah, a very <laughs> attractive package. Why am I keep selling this and keeping my TCR? I don't know. Okay, guys, well, you can probably tell that I'm a big fan of this Mark 7.5 Golf R Estate, which begs the question, why am I selling it instead of my GTI TCR, especially if it's the best Golf 7.5 there is? 
That all comes down to one little requirement for a car that I have that I don't think many other buyers will have. So I'm trying to be a bit more objective with this review. And that is that I need a car to do track days in. Now, before the Golf GTI TCR came along, I used to run a track day car alongside my daily car, but the TCR does it all. So it's economical, it's well-made, it's quite smart, it's super practical like any Golf, and especially with the performance pack, it does track days. Okay, it's not as practical as an estate car, you're a bit in trouble if you buy some things from Ikea because they just won't fit, but it's still practical. It's still a Golf, it's still got back seats, you can fold the seats down and so on. While the Estates, it's, it's, it's a great car, it's a really good all-rounder, but it, though I don't think it would really work that well on track. It's significantly heavier than the GTI TCR. It's very hard to find these with dynamic chassis control, and already on the road it can feel a bit roly-poly the minute you put it on track with those sort of long corners where you really load the car up, it's going to feel noticeably heavier than the TCR and as a result it won't be just as much fun to drive on track. So that's why for me the TCR is a better car but I think for 99% of other buyers the Golf R Estate does it all. Anyway, with the, the key message is whichever 7.5 you buy, they are going to be a, a high point for the Golf I think as we look back in time. The original design by Mark Lichter was great. It was a clean sheet design, first on the MQB platform. I think the tweaks for 7.5 unusually made it look even better. And that goes right across the range from the one litre TSI with the up engine right to the sort of R's. It's, it's a great car. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this Volks Wizard video. If you've enjoyed it as ever, give it a thumbs up. Please do comment, please do share, and please subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one soon. I've got a new car arriving in I can't believe it, four days. So look out for some great content on that in the next week or so.